If I fly on the wings of eagles, far beyond the stars, if I sink to the depths of oceans, even there, there you are. Before me, behind me, above me, below me, you surround me, you sustain me, promise that you'll always keep me. Before me, behind me, above me, below me, you surround me, you sustain me, promise that you'll always keep me. Quincy Point Congregation Church, Church School for All. Um, today's November 8th, and we're on ses session 7, Exodus 5, 1 through 13, 9. Okay, the um, song you just heard was Safe Inside Your Love. Um, today we will continue the story of Moses and meet the Pharaoh of Egypt. And remember, Moses was adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter. So the Pharaoh of Egypt is Moses' adopted grandfather. Hmm. We will learn what happened to the Pharaoh and the people of Egypt. Part of the story involves frogs. Um, last week, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. Moses did not think he could speak well enough, so God told him to take his brother Aaron to speak the Pharaoh because Aaron was a good speaker. Now Moses and Aaron are meeting Pharaoh together. So that's what the story, I set up the story for you. And now um, I want you to get your leaflets out and take them out in, while well, Joyce freezes the story, it's, I want you to turn to this page, Moses and the Pharaoh. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to um, See if you can number the um, plagues. And then also on the back, you can do this with your parents, um, the films of Moses and Aaron, and or with a friend, a close friend, and um, you can discuss well, how would you feel. Um, and they have questions here. So I think that, that would be nice to do. Okay. Now um, Joyce is going to take over and read you the story. Okay. Welcome. I'm here to read the story uh, for today's lesson. It's a long story, so uh, we need you to have um, um, good ears <laughs> so, so we can know how to number our um, plagues. Just as Karen showed you on this, she showed you, and if you have that ready, then you can number the plagues. All right, all right, this is a story drama, um, and we're reading um, the story drama to you. It's based on Exodus um, 5, which is um, chapter 5, verse 1, through chapter 13, verse 9. Moses and Aaron brought a message to Pharaoh from Jehovah, the God of Israel. Let my people go. They must make a holy pilgrimage out into the wilderness for a religious feast uh, to worship me there. That's what God's message was. Pharaoh replied, Who is this Jehovah that I should listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know any Jehovah, and I will not let Israel go. Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, and we must take a three days trip into the wilderness and sacrifice to Jehovah, our God. And if we don't obey him, we face death by plague or sword. Pharaoh shouted, who do you think you are? Get back to work. That same day, Pharaoh ordered the people of Israel um, not to receive straw they needed for making the bricks. And the number of bricks they had to make had to be the same as before. So they had to search for the straw and make all the bricks. 
the offices of the children of Israel cried out to Pharaoh, but he would not listen. He told them they were not working hard enough if they had time to go and sacrifice to their God. The quota of bricks would remain the same. The officers then blamed Aaron and Moses for Pharaoh's anger and hatred toward the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I shall do to Pharaoh, for he must be forced to let my people go. He will not only let them go, but he will drive them out of the land. I am Jehovah, the Almighty God, who appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and entered into a solemn covenant with them and their descendants. I promised to give them the land of Canaan and the land of their pilgrimage when they were strangers. I have heard the groanings um, of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage and slavery, and I remember my covenant. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses and told him, Go back to Pharaoh and tell him that he must let the children of Israel go. God appointed Moses as ambassador and Aaron as the spokesman. God said, Pharaoh will stubbornly refuse to let my people go and I will multiply the miracles in the land of Egypt. And indeed the Egyptians will find out that I am when um, I am God when I show them my power and force them to let my people go. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and performed the miracle just as Jehovah had instructed. Aaron threw down his rod and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same. Their rods became serpents too, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their serpents. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not let the people go. The Lord told Moses to go back to Pharaoh. Meet him in the morning by the river. Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to demand that you let his people go to worship him in the wilderness. Moses and Aaron followed the Lord's instructions for Aaron to hit the surface of the Nile River with his rod, and the water turned to blood. But the magicians also turned the water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not let the people go. The Lord instructed Moses to go again to Pharaoh and tell him, if you refuse to let my people go, worship me, that hordes of frogs will swarm all over their land in their houses. Aaron pointed his rod toward the river and all the frogs covered the nation. The magicians also caused frogs to come out of the land. Pharaoh summoned Moses to plead with God to take the frogs away tomorrow, and he would let the people sacrifice to him. Moses replied, it shall be done just as you have said, and you will know there is none like our Lord God. When the frogs were gone, Pharaoh hardened his heart, and he would not let the people go. Next, the Lord told Moses to tell Pharaoh if he refused to let the people go tomorrow, he would send swarms of flies or insects to fill their home. But in Goshen, there will be no flies or insects. Thus, you will know that I am the Lord God of all the earth. Jehovah did as, as he said. Pharaoh called Moses and agreed to let the people go. The Lord did as Moses asked and removed the flies and insects. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not let the people go and make the sacrifice in the wilderness. Moses went back again to Pharaoh and said, The Lord God will send a plague tomorrow on your cattle, horses, flocks, and herds, but it will not affect those, um, it will only affect those in Egypt and the, not the herds of the children of Israel. The Lord did what he said. Still, Pharaoh's heart was hardened 
and he would not let the people go. The Lord told, <clears throat> excuse me, the Lord told Moses to take ashes from the furnace and scatter them toward the heavens. And if fine dust will fall and cause boils to break out on the people's beasts through the land. Pharaoh refused to listen and he would not let the people go. Again, Moses came before Pharaoh to warn him that the Lord God was going to send hailstones, a hailstorm, to um, cross the nation as never happened in Egypt before. But the land of Goshen, the land of the children of Israel, would not be affected. Those who believed Jehovah brought in their servants and their livestock. Moses held out his hand as the Lord said, and thunder, hail, and lightning filled the land. Moses begged, to, excuse me, Pharaoh begged Moses to ask God to stop the hail. Moses lifted his hands unto the Lord and the hail stopped. Proof that the earth was controlled only by, by Jehovah. But again, Pharaoh's heart was hard and refused to let the people go. So the Lord sent Moses and Aaron to ask Pharaoh to submit to Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, and to let the children of Israel go so they can worship. And if he refused tomorrow, their land would be covered with locusts. The court officials pleaded with Pharaoh to let the men go and serve Jehovah their God. Moses and Aaron were told to go and serve their God, but only men, not women, children, or their flocks or herds. So Moses lifted his rod and Jehovah caused the east wind to bring locusts, the worst plague in Egypt's history. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and confessed his sin against Jehovah and promised, he promised not to refuse to let them go if Jehovah would take away the locusts. Jehovah did as Pharaoh asked, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not let the people go. So the Lord told Moses to prepare the people for the last plague, the death of the firstborn. Each family needed a year old lamb or goat without blemish. On the 14th day of the month, all the lambs shall be killed and their blood shall be placed on the door frames. The blood on the doorposts and lintel will be proof that you obey me. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and I will not destroy your firstborn. When I smite those in Egypt, you shall celebrate this year event each year, a permanent law to remind you of this fatal night. The celebration shall last seven days eating bread without yeast. So the people did as Aaron and Moses commanded. And the death of the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt took place. Pharaoh summoned, um, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron during the night and pleaded with them to leave, go away and serve Jehovah Take your herds and flocks and be gone. That night, the people of Israel left Ramses. They were 600,000 of them, besides women and children. And they approximate about 2 million people leaving with Moses and Aaron. The sons of Jacob and their de descendants had lived in Egypt for 
430 years, and it was on the last day of the 430th year that all Jehovah's people uh, left the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with them, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel a vow, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry my bones from here with you. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give them light traveling either day or night, and the cloud and the fire were never out of sight as they traveled to the promised land. And now I'm going to turn this back over to Karen. She's going to help you with the questions. Now, Joyce and I are going to go through the um, question, some questions to better understand the story. Um, and the first question is, when Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh what God desired, desired what, did the Pharaoh, what did Pharaoh say? Okay, I think that was in Exodus 5. Verses 1 and 2. Yes, it was. Okay. And the, you know what the Pharaoh said? Who is this Lord? He really wanted to know who it was. Okay. All right. And then the second. And there's another name that was used too. The name is Jehovah. Now, who was Jehovah? That It's another name for God. Yep. And it was in. So, that's good. Yeah. Good. And in the Bible, there's many names, names. for God. Right. And it can get a little confusing, but um, one of them we talked about last week was I am. I am. Yes. Yes. Okay. So next question. When Aaron threw down his um, shepherd's rod in front of the Pharaoh, what happened? Well, we found that in Exodus 7, 8 through 13. And I think his rod turned into a snake, didn't it? Yes, it did. It did turn into a snake. And then the magicians of that time threw their rods down to prove that they could do the same thing. And, um, but at, and their rod turned into the same, a snake too, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their snakes. <laughs> and, and Pharaoh still would not let the people go. No, no. even after that. Okay. Um, what, what did God order the Israelites to do before the last prayer? Plague. Okay, that was in Exodus 12, 1 through 7, and then 13 through 14. And mm -hmm. um, what did he do? Did he ask them to get a lamb or something? Yes, he did. He asked them to take a lamb and, um, and to cook it. And on the 10th month, um, on the 10th of the month, um, Take, yeah, get that lamb, yeah, and then get on the lamb. get yeah. the lamb on the fourteenth day of the month. They it was um, ordered to kill the lamb, and then they would um, slaughter it. And then with the blood of the lamb, they would put the um, blood of the lamb over the doors. Was, over the door, yeah. Over there, called the lintel in their doorpost. So it went all around like you when you walk out the door, the sides of the door and the top of the door, all the way around. Yeah. That's yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Um, there's another question here. Yeah. What What would happen? Um, what would happen if they followed the instructions? If they followed the instructions, then the angel of death would pass over the Israelites' firstborn in their offspring in their animals. Yeah. But because God was going to come, and what what was going to happen? If you didn't put that blood, the, the angel of death would come and take away, have the firstborn die, the death of the firstborn. Okay, mm -hmm. and so, um, okay, that's what okay, happened. That's happened. Okay. How many years did the Israelites live in Egypt when the Lord's people left Egypt? I wonder if they remember that it was. 430 years? Yes, it was. Okay. 430 years. Imagine that. 
400 years. Now, if we think about 400 years mm -hmm. and we think about the pilgrims coming to America, how That's... long ago did they come to America? Mm. 400 years. Just really? Right. Wow. Now, oh. hmm. And we just having a birthday of 1620 to 2020. Okay, so think about that. That's a long time, isn't it? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> now get your leaflet out and we'll go through it with you. I hope you remember to number them. Number them. So these are the plagues. So the first one was um, num up here, water turns into blood. Yep. And then <clears throat> number two, the frogs came. The, the frogs came, came. yep. Mm -hmm. and number num three was lice. lice. Number four were the insects. Oh, the flies. Flies yeah. are insects. Yeah. Flies are insects. Number five was the D disease. disease on the livestock. Yeah, right. They so, all get sick, right? Yep. Number six. Number six was the, um, they had blisters. Blisters or boils, they called them, on their hands, hands and on their body, right? Yep. And number seven was hail and lightning. Yep. And number eight, eight was the locusts. Locusts. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they destroyed all the um, food. Right. And everything that was left was gone with the locusts. Right. Yep. Yeah. And number nine was the darkness. Darkness. Can you imagine everything's being dark? No stars. It, it shows stars in the picture, yeah. but there was no moon, no stars, no light. Wow, that's really dark. Mm. Okay. Number ten is the death of the firstborn. Yeah. And that so. was the hardest one of all. And that yes, was the it was. One that finally Pharaoh let the children of Israel go. This was a terrible time for the people. Sadness filled the land. The Israelites were hoping for freedom as they saw the mighty works of God as a plague happen. Sometimes even when we have faith, we can be afraid and wonder how things will turn out. I wonder if that is how the Israelites felt. I, I think it's how they felt. You know, when will this happen? When will we be able to be let go? How many times do we, um, has um, Jehovah showed his power and they wouldn't let, and Pharaoh wouldn't let them go? <clears throat> and sometimes we can feel that same way when um, we think, um, oh, something bad has happened and um, that we have to wait for a prayer to be answered or we, um, think that we're afraid of um, being bullied or other things that happen to us and we um, can call on the Lord God to help us um, to help us with all that we um, are afraid of yes. because we're safe in his love always and God loves us and yes. he's with us yes you know, yes. he'll always be there. Right, exactly. Always. Always. Right. Okay. Next, next, um, <clears throat> Joyce is going to show you how to do a craft. There I am. Hey, I'm back again. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to make this frog. So you have your paper and um, in your do at home section, you have a piece of green paper like this. You have instructions like this to go by. And I'm going to show you, you also have googly eyes. I only have one, but you have two at home in your packet. All right. So first of all, you're going to take your paper the, the tall way. And you're going to fold it. Just fold it in half. The tall way. Just like that. Okay? All the way. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to open it up, lay it down flat on something. You're going to take one corner and you're going to uh, bring it over. 
and make it look like this. Okay? So you brought that corner over and you made it look like that. Now we're going to open that up again and we're going to take this next corner over here and we're going to bring that down and make it look like that. Okay? Then we're going to open it up again and we're going to fold it. We're going to fold it backwards towards me and crease it just like that, right in the center of the point that you um, made a crisscross, made an X. Okay? All right, that was number two. Number three, um, you're going to bring, oh, we, that was the three. That was folding it down was the three. Number four, you're going to bring in your sides. These little sides here, this side and this side, it's going to go in. It's going to fold in. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm having a little difficulty here, and I hope you don't have too much difficulty folding it in, but it's not wanting to fold in. Okay, I got it now, I think. Okay, fold it in, fold it in. So you're going to bring these two parts, this one on this side, this one on this side, and we're going to fold it in. So we're going to meet them together, right in the middle. We're going to have it look like this. This is going to fold down flat here and flat here. Okay, so then it looks like this. Pretty interesting, huh? Mm. If you get that far, <laughs> that'll you be doing really great. Okay, now you're going to make the feet. So here's where the feet come in. All right, so this foot comes up this way, and this foot comes up this way. Okay, just follow your instructions. All right, follow them. So this foot comes up this way, this foot comes up this way. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold these sections. This section here is going to fold in just like that to the middle. And this section is going to fold in right into the middle. Just like that, just like that. All right, we're almost finished. We don't have it quite ready yet, but almost. So there's his feet. All right. Now we just have to fold the back. So the back is here and we're going to fold this front part right where the feet meet you see where the feet meet across each one just put it down and pull that pull this up pull that piece of paper up so your feet are here inside that paper's there and then you're going to fold that back again fold it in half so you you sorry <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is funny, isn't it? <laughs> okay, now we'll fold that back, fold that back, and now you've got a frog. See? See the frog? You, you think it looks like a frog? Maybe. You think it looks like this frog? I think it does. Okay, so then you put the eye on. Now I just have one eye, so it can just go on the frog. Use a, it, it should be a sticky eye. You take the back off and of your eye and then stick it on. Or you can color your frog. You could make a face on your frog. But I'm hoping that you'll be able to make your frog jump. It, it, it's pretty hard for me to show you. So if you go like this, he should jump. <laughs> He didn't jump very well. Let me see if this frog jumps better. Well, well, whatever. I hope, <laughs> I hope you had fun making that craft. Anyways, to help you remember that the plagues came and God, Jehovah God, sent them for a reason. And that um, finally Pharaoh let his people, let the people go to worship God in the wilderness. Okay, so now what's next we're doing? All right, we're going over to, the, to our word over here. 
Um, we looked up the word God, remember, in the um, Bible dictionary. And then we, um, all, we um, found out that he's creator of um, all, all of life. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth. And then we looked up the word Egypt, and we found out that Egypt was um, the first, one of the oldest nation states. Um, and that's pretty impressive because a lot of people at that, um, when Egypt was making their pyramids and all of that, they were nomadics, nomadic people, and they um, weren't a nation. They were just people, just families but Egypt was a nation, okay? And then this is the new word today, Passover. Now you heard the story and you know that Passover, um, what God wanted them to do was put the lamb, the lamb's blood around the doorpost and over the top and down the sides. So the angel of death would pass over the households and they would not, um, the, the angel of death would not kill the firstborn. So, and God said that it should be an annual um, celebration, a celebration um, to remember that um, God passed over the um, firstborn. God brought them out of Israel, out uh, is brought Israel out of Egypt. And um, one thing that might help remember um, was that each time that they celebrate Passover, um, the people use unleavened bread. It's called matzos, like this. And they use the unleavened bread in Passover time today. So they use it um, to remember. They didn't have time for the yeast to work in the bread. They had to leave right away. So that was one of the things that they used at Passover. Um, there's other things that are used at Passover too. And the uh, Jewish people today celebrate this um, every single year. Um, also, if you remember about the matzos, we've used it before when we um, did communion at um, Lent. And we had the story about how Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus had his disciples and he gave them the last Passover meal, which we now call communion. And in our communion, we break the bread and we say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And then we have a cup. And this is what Jesus told us. This is the cup of the new covenant. This is the um, covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus celebrated Passover too. It's an important celebration. And we celebrate it as communion. And we have communion every first um, Sunday of the month to help us to remember that who Jehovah the Lord God is and how Jesus told us to do this in remembrance of him that his body was broken for us. Okay, <clears throat> so now we um, will go to our Bible verse. I'm going to put that up and we're going to remember that God said to fear not. I am with you. Jesus told us that plenty of times too. To fear not. And so we're going to do our Bible verse again. Hopefully you'll help us to do it from home. All right? You getting ready? All right, here we go. God said, I'll be with you. And this will show you that I am the one who sent you. Exodus, what is that? Exodus 3, 12. Okay. And now, 
uh, we're going to say our prayer. And um, you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, I thank you that through your word, I thank you that through your word, you will help me stand up for what is right. You will help me stand up for what is right. I know that I am safe inside your love. I know that I am safe inside your love. Amen. Amen. And this, this Sunday, we're going to say the 23rd Psalm. And I forgot to tell you to get that ready. But I know many of you have learned this. And so we're going to say it together. Karen's going to help me, and I'm going to help her. All right? That you ready, Karen? Good, Joyce. All I'm right. Ready. All right, so take a deep breath. And then let it out. And we will begin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now we're going to give you the blessing. <clears throat> Again, hold out your hand and get ready to print your name using your other finger. Put your name in there and then we're going to say, God said, I will be with you. Write your name. And repeat it. God said, I will be with you. It's wonderful to have God with us. Remember, God is with us always. He loves us. He loves you. And he says, fear not. I will be with you always. All right. That ends our Sunday, um, November 8th. And we hope to see you next time. Thank you, Karen, for all your help. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. Thanks Bye. for watching. Yep. Thanks for watching. Bye. Every time I feel discouraged.